Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Good to see everyone. If you have your Bibles, uh, you may open up to uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 21. Put your finger there at verse 10. Our Torah portion this week is entitled Kitetze, and it's from the phrase, uh, when you go out. Kitetze, when you go out. Uh, we'll come back to that in just a moment. Quick update. Um, Last week, I uh, shared with you that not everything was going well between the United States Department of Defense and the Israeli uh, Defense Forces, the IDF, that um, Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta and the Chairman of the Joyce Chiefs, uh, General Dempsey, uh, were here um, in the United States and in carrying out what obviously is the policy of the president, trying to keep Israel from attacking Iran, does not want a war before the election of November uh, 5th, 6th, whichever the election day is. Um, and I shared with you that the Obama administration, the United States government, is trying to do everything they can to discourage uh, the decision-making process of Israel is contemplating the possibility of striking Iran uh, military to stop their nuclear weapon program. I shared with you uh, last week that the, uh, the White House has been caught with their hand in the cookie jar messing with the Israeli media, uh, influencing retired generals and government officials, trying to get them to, to do the bidding of the United States against uh, Netanyahu and the government. Uh, and then I shared with you that uh, the Secretary of Defense and uh, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs made this interesting statement to the effect that uh, they didn't believe that Israel uh, had the ability to stop Iran's nuclear weapons program, uh, that the best that they could do is maybe slow it down a little bit, and was basically uh, impugning uh, the Israeli defense forces about their ability to project force in the Middle East to accomplish their goals. And quite honestly, as I shared with you before, that is the first time that has ever uh, happened in Israel's history that the United States has ever made a statement um, demeaning, to a certain extent, the IDF forces. There's always been great respect on the part of the United States, especially the Department of Defense, uh, with regard to uh, how Israel has protected themselves and militarily how they have done things. So quite honestly, they have taken uh, some of our equipment, other equipment they've purchased, modified it, and they do some rather spectacular things with the military that even the United States is a little bit surprised as to how capable they're doing. So to have, to have the Secretary of Defense and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs make such a statement, it was perceived in Israel as uh, impugning them. And as I shared with you last week, that uh, they found a government spokesman uh, to basically come back and retort against the U.S. military establishment by saying that the United States does not fully understand the capability of the Israeli Defense Forces, and there are things that the United States does not know. And I went on to then share with you that um, there was obviously a leak, <laughs> only this time it came from the Israelis into the press, about a possible scenario as to what Israel could do with Iran. Now, before we've been getting leaks that we think came from the White House and from the United States trying to blunt the plans of the Israelis. Now, the Israelis leaked some of their own plans. And as I shared with you last week, when I first read the first thing, uh, made the hair stand up on the back of my neck uh, because they, it was a massive first strike on Iran, and Iran would not survive uh, it would probably take the country back to the Stone Ages. Uh, and it, not only would it shut down their nuclear program, probably slow it down, it would shut the whole country down. Great. And, um, and then on top of that, the Israeli plan was to actually cut the head off of the Iranian leadership and specifically target them with cruise missiles and other weapons that would go after every leader in Iran, 
And if you were a leader in Iran, why, you should be very afraid uh, of what the Israelis could do. Well, in response uh, to that, uh, that I mentioned to you last week, what, what has basically happened this week? Well, the Russians decided to chime in. And the Russians have been making some very serious decisions. The Russians have a sense of something that's getting ready to happen, so they have announced to Iran that they're ceasing all military sales to Iran, and they do not want to do any more business with them militarily. They do have them on contract to provide um, a new air defense system, the S-300 air defense system, but Iran is having to take them to international court to get the Russians to give it to them. Uh, the Russians have ceased. They also announced to Syria that they're no longer supplying arms or equipment to Syria. And in fact, uh, uh, President Putin of the Russians just ordered, in fact, they have already departed and ordered all Russian ships to leave Syria. And uh, so they're pulling out of that. Part of the reason for that is that there is a hot, hot rumor running right now that the U.S. is going to, um, involved with the Saudis and some other nations, that they're going to be sending um, special ops forces into Syria to assist the rebels against um, uh, the Syrians. The Iranians have already sent their very elite special forces in, and Syria is now turning into a major uh, civil war between the Sunnis and between the Shiites. Uh, There's now a campaign that's gone out worldwide to recruit Sunni fighters to come to Syria and Shiite fighters to come to Syria. In fact, the news is leaking about uh, that the Shiite fighters are being trained in Lebanon and then going across the border uh, into Syria, and that the Sunni fighters are being trained in Turkey, collected in Saudi Arabia, going to Turkey, being trained there, and then sent in as well. So it's a big Sunni-Shiite showdown going on in Syria. Uh, the thing is, it has expanded way beyond just the Bashar Assad administration in Syria. Uh, it's the beginning of the regional war, but it's at a clandestine level uh, at this particular point. Iran must support Syria, and everybody knows that if Syria is broken, that Iranians' position for what they're trying to do, their plans will be severely blunted, and it will split them with Hezbollah and Lebanon, and and it will not work out for them. Tensions obviously building greatly in the region. Now, I would remind everybody that um, Bashar Assad has repeatedly said that if foreign forces come into his land, that he'll light up the entire Middle East and attack Israel in particular uh, as well. So that's the latest and greatest with regard to that, except that I want to mention one other thing, and that is that um, this is just a few days ago that the uh, U.S. ambassador to Israel, uh, Mr. Shapiro, uh, met with uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and, um, and uh, other. Uh, there was apparently a U.S. congressman Uh, also that was there at the time. And the subject, of course, came up. The the core issue between Israel and the U.S., uh, the subject is that Obama says, I think that there's still time for diplomacy to work. And, of course, it was Netanyahu's position is that there is no more time for diplomacy. Diplomacy has failed. Now, the reason why Obama is saying, well, I think there's more time for diplomacy is because although the new IAEA report, the the UN's uh, nuclear watchdog, has reported that uh, Iran has upscaled their nuclear enrichment, uh, that they're installing more centrifuges uh, in their big secret underground facility, that they've more than essentially doubled the number of those, and that they're hinting and talking about enriching uranium beyond the 20%, Just for the record, so everybody understands what that means, Uh, 20% enrichment uranium um, can be used for medical isotopes and to run a nuclear reactor for electricity. You have to crank it up to like 80% to 90%, which would be weapons-grade nuclear material. That's what would be used in a weapon. And so the, 
recently Iran announced they're going to build a nuclear submarine. And to build that nuclear submarine, they would need uh, nuclear material at the 80% level. So they're announcing, well, we're going to enrich this stuff up to 80%, supposedly for a submarine, <laughs> when in fact we all know that they're taking the step toward building weapons grade, um, not only uranium, but, but plutonium as well. They actually have two efforts. By the way, plutonium is only for weapons. It's only for weapons. So it's very clear to anybody who has, I'm going to be real careful on my explanation here, half a brain, that, um, that Iran is moving forward with its weapons, nuclear weapons program, and President Obama just doesn't want to believe it. He just wants to believe that the real way to solve this is to get the Iranian leaders to change their mind. And, and at this point, uh, the president has succeeded in the way he has conducted this, uh, this process over the last two years. Instead of convincing the Iranians that we mean business on this, since we've got aircraft carriers, the best aircraft in the world, bunker buster bombs, and we, we've got the equipment, but they don't believe that the American president has the will to use any of it. And as a result, they just don't believe the threat. And Netanyahu has been complaining about the fact that the United States has, you know, you put all the forces over there, but, it, but it's not believable. So it didn't accomplish a thing for you. So the president's, if you step back for a moment, the president's diplomacy program has failed. It's not getting the results. Even his military backup, all options are on the table, as they say. Even that's not believed. Iran doesn't believe it. So it's not a threat to them. And they continue to do whatever they want to do. And, of course, uh, I think President Obama thinks that we can live with a nuclear Iran. We live with a nuclear Korea. We live with a nuclear Pakistan and India. But I would remind everybody that Iran is not North Korea and is not India or Pakistan. And, and North Korea has not said that we're going to annihilate the Japanese and blow them off the map, nor has anybody else. But Iran has. And by the way, there's, they're, they're the religious leaders over there are just crazy enough to do it. And Israel believes it, but uh, I don't think our president believes it. And so he's not sitting in Jerusalem or in Tel Aviv, and so he doesn't really feel that terribly threatened. And as a result, he um, keeps talking about how he's the best friend of Israel and we have the most cooperation and so forth, but... I will go ahead and tell you right now, things ain't looking so good between Israel and the United States right now. Because two days ago, when this discussion took place between the ambassador to Israel with Benjamin Netanyahu, it turned into a shouting match to the shock of the congressman. I mean, the congressman was absolutely shocked by essentially what Netanyahu told the U.S. ambassador. And the U.S. ambassador tried to just spout the U.S. line of what President Obama's been saying. And Netanyahu told him in no uncertain terms, I don't believe you. I don't think you know what you're talking about. And I think you're wrong. And so um, just the other night, um, um, Mitt Romney, in, in accepting his uh, nomination to be the Republican candidate for president, made the comment that it's in his opinion that President Obama's thrown Israel under the bus. Today, uh, the spokesman for the president said that the relationship between Israel and the United States is as close as it's ever been and announced specifically that there is unbelievable uh, cooperation between the Department of Defense and the intelligence communities uh, to prove that. And it's like, excuse me, Mr. President, but two days ago I got the information pretty clear that there's a complete breakdown of communications between the Department of Defense and the IDF, and right now the Israelis are refusing to share any intelligence with the United States. Amen. And they are calling the president on the, on the carpet for using his intelligence communities to mess with the political process inside of Israel and not paying attention to the U.N. nuclear reports on what's going on in Iran and not doing anything about it. Right. So 
right now i would i think it's fair game to say that the relationship between the united states and israel is probably as bad as it's ever been in the history and um Benjamin Netanyahu is scheduled to meet with the president sometime during the UN meetings, which are in the latter part of September. I've heard both September 18th, but the latest I've heard is September 27th, at which point that uh, Netanyahu has agreed to meet with the president on the side. Now, the preliminary discussions, by the way, when leaders like that meet, listen, they, everybody knows what's going to get said. You don't have the meeting if you don't know what's going to get said. There's nothing spontaneous when national leaders meet. It's all been worked out by their staffs. But right now, there's uh, quite a bit of scuffling going on as to exactly what's going to get said and what's going to be done at that meeting. Now, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know whether the, the American president is going to yield on some things or whether Benjamin Netanyahu is going to back down or who's going to threaten who or whatever, but I can tell you right now, we ain't going to be having one of those back of the White House, let's have a beer talks. It's going to be serious. And if I had to bet right now, of which I'm not really a betting man, but if I had to, I would bet that I think that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is probably going to communicate with the president that uh, we're going to hit Iran uh, before the elections and formally put him on notice now and then notify him now, if you want to step it up and you want to take the lead, well, you go right ahead. But if you're not willing to lead on this thing, then step aside because we will. And I think that's basically, that's, that's what's rumbling right now in the whole situation. By the way, Iran also doesn't believe that uh, Israel will attack them either. In this whole scenario, um, Iran is not feeling threatened at all. Although their forces are on full military alert and they're all concerned about things, and, and uh, I don't think they're uh, scoffing and not doing anything about it, but I, I think that deep down inside they don't believe that Netanyahu will do it, that just like they don't believe that Obama will do it. They'll think that Obama is going to keep Netanyahu from doing it. In the meantime, they're moving fast forward on their nuclear weapons program. All of these tensions... Are, are simply, um, it, it's, it's fascinating to me. You know the old uh, expression about that, uh, you know, if you, if you put a frog in, in warm water and you start boiling it, well, the frog won't jump out and you'll just go ahead and boil him to death. You know, it's the idea that if you get used to certain things, you start tolerating certain things, then you get up to a certain critical point and, and it, it no longer has the effect of being a shocking thing. It's just kind of the world has been sitting in a boiling pot of water for a little while, especially about the Middle East, especially about economic crisis, conflict, uh, all, all kinds of trauma and trouble that's going on in the world, Syria, for crying out loud, all, all the things that are going on. Any one of these incidents without the other things, ever, the world would be in a state of shock. I can assure you right now that what's going on in the world it's ten times worse than the Cuban Missile Crisis ever thought of being. And I remember as a kid, that was pretty scary stuff. And, uh, and yet, the world is not afraid. They're just walking into this thing. Our leaders are not afraid. And, and they're not responding. They're not, they're not responding to the issues. Uh, correctly, the only guy is Benjamin Netanyahu. And he seems to be responding to the point where everybody else is getting tired of him. It just I mean, even the allies are getting tired of him, constantly trying to bring the issue up to try to get the world to do something about it. So uh, that seems to be the nature of the world that we live in. Um, let's pray, and let's ask that God would continue to keep watch faithfully and fulfill his good word to vindicate and protect uh, those that are his in these dangerous times. Father, thank you for this Sabbath again, and you know the situation between the United States, between Israel, Iran, and the other enemies of Israel. 
We are concerned about that, Lord, because we're talking about your covenantal people, your land. And in particular, as we read the scriptures and follow and walk out our own faith, Lord, we see your own words and prophecies about the situation that's going on with us today. We know that Jerusalem has become a trembling cup to the world, a cup of poison to them. And we know that any leader who attempts to lift them up, it's like a stone that crushes and bruises them. And we've watched our own country attempt to play with Jerusalem and the people there, and it has not worked out to the favor of our country. You said all of these things. We believe your word. We also believe your word, Lord, that you're pledged to neither leave nor forsake your people and that you're aware of the enemies and all of the things they speak against us and against those that live in the land of Israel. And we again ask, Lord, for your strong vindication of all of these things. We ask for your uh, angels to be standing guard and to watch the moves of the enemy and so that uh, none are caught unawares by their actions. And we ask, Lord, that you would defeat the enemies of Israel soon and very soon. We ask it in Yeshua's name. Amen.